With a high-speed camera, and I mean really high speed. 6,000 frames per second. Michael Dickinson, a bioengineer at Caltech, can see movement so fast that they were invisible to us before these cameras existed. Lately, he's turned his sights towards the takeoff of flies, and the footage revealed exactly why they're so hard to swat. In his experiment, which he reported in the journal Current Biology, he watched the fly just before a swat, and this is what he saw. So the first thing we notice is that the fly sort of, you know, stops doing what it's doing and puts all of its legs down. And then over about the next hundred thousandths of a second, the, the fly makes these postural changes with its legs and body, sort of positioning its powerful jump legs so that when it eventually jumps, it will sort of push the body away from the threat. And these are the things that, you know, just hadn't been seen before. If moving away from something that's coming right at you doesn't seem that complicated, consider that the fly pulled off this escape move in a few hundred milliseconds. We can hardly blink that fast. I mean, that's why I, you know, I, I kind of bristle a bit when I hear people describe any organism, really, but especially an insect as being sort of a simple, a simple organism. I mean, imagine everything you see in those videos is being controlled by a computer that could fit inside a poppy seed. And that's part of the appeal. How they fly so well with such a little brain is still kind of a mystery. To get a better sense of their aerodynamics, at least, Dickinson's lab built a scaled-up robot fly. So that thing is not just, just flapping, it's flapping in three metric tons of mineral oil. And that simulates what it's like for a tiny fruit fly to flap in air. Dickinson's developed another device, too, to decode fly flight. It allows him to watch the fly fly without it going anywhere. Yeah, one of the crazier things that we do in the laboratory is that we build flight simulators. We glue the insect to a, a fine pin. And this is kind of amazing. The insect has sensors on its feet, so when they remove the ground, it reflexively starts to flap. Um, and then we can suspend the insect. I'm surrounded by a sort of electronic display and we can change the electronic display depending upon what the insect is trying to do. So the insect can sort of fly through a, a virtual landscape. And as it flies through, Dickinson can study how the fly turns and maneuvers in the air. And this is what they think it looks like for the fly. The fly eye forms one image of the world just like our eye forms one image of the world. It's just that a fly uses sort of multiple lenses to do it, whereas we use one lens. Another big difference is that the fly visual system is much faster than ours. So, for example, if you took, you know, if you took your pet fly to a movie theater, you know, where the images were, sh you know, showing it, you know, 24 times a second, you know, the, the, the fly would say, you know, why did you take me to a, to a slideshow? <laughs> they need to see things faster. It's their defense, and it allows them to zip through the world. But for slow seers like us, it's kind of hard to imagine what quick eyes might be like. And that's exactly what intrigues Dickinson about flies. A lot of people study fruit flies, you know, to gain sort of insights into how humans work. But I really, study, you know, I study insects to understand how, how insects work, because I think in some ways they do some things that are similar to us, but the things that are more interesting are sort of the things that they, that they don't do like us, that they, they've come with completely different sort of solutions for making their way through the world. You know, you just go out in your backyard and, you know, look around your garbage can, and it's, it's sort of like traveling to a different planet. Try thinking about that the next time you reach for the swatter. I'm Flora Lichtman for Science Friday.